2.4 gigahertz is dead. I'm just saying. So, so here's, here's what got me on this little um, a tirade. Uh, at last time we were here, uh, I watched uh, Stoney's uh, presentation about, uh, you know, there's just 2.4 everywhere. And, you know, 5 gig is unused. It's mostly unused. Uh, you know, it, it depends on where you go. You know, a lot of you guys work in environments that 5 gig is, you know, starting to get used pretty heavily. But uh, for the most part, call it 80 or 90% of the places I go, 5 gigs unused. And if it, it, it may be turned on. In fact, last week it wasn't turned on. I go to a school and they say, we, we're not getting any 5 gig in the classroom. Out comes air check. I said, no, you're not. Or in the hallway or right under the AP. You have it turned off. Why? And they're like, Ugh. so, um, and then, you know, you, you go to, you get hired to do spectrum analysis. And I mean, I'm like, you mean a survey, right? And they're like, nope, just spectrum analysis. I'm like, oh wait, you actually know what you're talking about. They said just spectrum analysis. So you go out there and it's 80 to 90% on channels one through 13. I mean, just buried. It looks, that was an actual screenshot on site. So this isn't me coloring it in. And so, uh, that, uh, that got me thinking a little bit, you know, after I saw uh, Stoney's presentation, I wonder how bad this problem really is. So I started really looking at this everywhere I went, a variety of vertical markets and so on, and it was, it was way worse than I thought. So I would say if I wanted to be very, very accurate, and I know you guys are very nerdy and, and you want us to be very accurate, I would say that Von Nagy probably said it best last night in a, in a bit of a stupor. Um, he, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> He said, it's not dead yet, but it's on life support. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I, I do see places where 2.4 gig is, is not completely and utterly trashed, but it's the minority. And so, so uh, uh, here's, so hopefully you guys will get this. Uh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> apologies um, for those of you who do get it. So uh, there's three main factors of 2.4 that are a problem. <laughs> Yeah, you got it, didn't you? Um, penetration is, is a big one. We, we like penetration if we're in, say, 1998. Um, that's fantastic because, you know, we have four APs covering an entire building. Um, that's wonderful because it costs about $7 to deploy wireless LANs. But now it's not quite like that, is it? And so, uh, so penetration is a problem. It's actually a problem. We, we don't want uh, RF going everywhere. We want to control the RF. We want it to be where we want it to be and nowhere else. What else? Interference, both modulated and unmodulated. And what does modulated mean? It means we're trying to communicate. Whether it's Zigbee or it's Bluetooth, that's modulated um, uh, signal. And whether we're talking about those types of interferers, we're talking about microwave ovens and Lord knows and all the rest of them, right? And, and a lot of them, um, the baby uh, monitors, for example, that's modulated. Maybe frequency hoppers or some ridiculous, you know, high power narrow band or, or whatever, but it's modulated. And these, they're getting to be so many of these things. IoT is going to, you know, I'm, I'm always ranting about IoT. And I, yes, I know I'm two to three years early on that, but I'm telling you, it's coming. And so <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, I was a little early on CWMP too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we kicked that off in 01. So the frequency space, I don't even have to preach this. This is a message you already know. I mean, you wouldn't be here unless you already knew these things. So penetration, the, the actual numerics on this is 4.3 times better in open space for 2.4. Um, you know, I, I wish they were the same, actually. That'd be great. But this, this penetration is causing a pretty big problem. You know, uh, you guys might have seen the, the uh, white paper that Keith and I uh, have out about uh, um, this whole 1A paper classroom. Now, granted, the, the, this, this is the most, I'm a polarizing kind of guy. I can walk in a room and people just divide and start arguing with each other. What did I do? Um, and I realized that we, we take on a lot of topics like this. But um, the whole p purpose of that was to take a good look at the environment. Do you just stick APs out there or, or do you actually l measure it and look and see what you're doing? And, and it's not 5 gig that causes a problem in that 1 AP per classroom scenario. It's the 2.4. And so uh, if you just start cranking everything up and throwing them everywhere, the 2.4 is going to be a disaster. With normal walls in a school or a hospital or anything else, normal wall thickness and drop about 14 to 20 dB uh, is going to be great for 5 gig in every room. That's going to be great in a lot of cases. So there's uh, IoT is a pretty big problem. You know, all the analysts, now granted, I know as soon as I say something like 
the, the G word, um, Gartner. Um, if I say that, I get, I, get, I get a moan and a groan. Blah, you know, I realize that. But there are several uh, such firms that are screaming and yelling these days about um, the same numbers. Now, I think they're all just copying each other. I don't think any of them actually knew what number, and their formulas are probably bogus. But, but it, it suffices to say that if you've got five or six major firms betting on the same numbers, that they may be off a little, but they're probably not off something crazy. And so it's going to be a, an ish, a big issue. In five gig, eh, it'll be sort of an issue because we hope that we have a lot more uh, DFS capable clients and APs and such as that out there uh, in the next couple of years. But 2.4 is going to be a problem. It's already a problem. It's going to get worse. So we've got a whopping three non-overlapping channels plus the awesome channel 14. And <laughs> you know, you guys ought to read up on that if you haven't. And, and so there's just not enough frequency space to do much in 2.4. It's a pretty resilient band, just the same, but it's gonna get to the point where it's too busy. There's not enough air time. And like Chuck said, that air time is everything. It is, that is how you get density and how you get performance and user experience. Um, another actual screenshot. Man, noise floor is just so bad in 2.4. Um, everywhere I go, it's this way. Uh, but I'm seeing it uh, to the point now where it hits up in the neg 20, neg 10. I'm like, I can't use Wi-Fi here. Impossible. Um, in order to get capacity, you need reuse. If you capacity or good user experience, anything that you really care, uh, care about, you, you need channel reuse. I'm really gl glad that uh, uh, Chuck's was before mine because it drove home this point very well. I love this graphic. It came from uh, Wireless Training Solutions with um, uh, Scott and, and Rick. And, uh, and I believe originally Keith had something to do with this picture. And so um, this illustrates just how far and at what power uh, a signal can be heard in, in 2.4. And of course you can do the same uh, in 5 gig. This came from Air Magnet. So on, on one side we've got an access point. And we're not talking the end zone either, we're talking the other side of the end zone. So this is 120 yards uh, in open space. You put an AP on the outside of the end zone on one side and put on one milliwatt on the other side. Look at your power. It's, it's unbelievable how much you have there. Neg 82. In general, you know, planning guidelines or designing guidelines, we're going to try to get around, what is it, neg 2 to neg 87 depending on environment, but let's call it neg 87 is a pretty good, uh, uh, make sure you can't uh, or your client won't back off due to this kind of interference. So, Neg 82 can cause, still cause back off. And how do we know this? Well, let's take a look at some spec sheets here. It's whether it's an access point doing the listening or it's a client doing the listening. When, when you, you know, you have uh, the sensitivity in 2.4 that's so sensitive, these radios nowadays are so sensitive that uh, they, they can hear things below the noise floor. You're like, wait, what? Below the noise floor? That's, that's just dumb. Nope. That's how sensitive they are because if you look at some of these numbers, I can't even read it from over here, but let's just call it in the, you know, the, um, down the 98 to 101 range, they can hear that well. And yet the noise floor in 2.4 is what? Uh, neg 90 to neg 93, give or take, you know, usually. And so they can hear better than the noise floor. So that means they hear everything. And so if they can hear that well, and you stick them you know, room by room by room, you can forget, you know, it's ridiculous. You, everything is backing off all the time. Okay, so uh, we've got five gig. Stony, I don't know if you guys attended Sony's presentation um, last year or this year, but he showed some of the, some of the same graphics where 2.4 is just leveled. It's just, it's trashed. And yet five gig is either, I kept just saying, he'd say, how many, how many APs do you think is going to be in five gig? One, no, it's two, or none. And, and so that's, but I'm finding it's not just uh, the fact you're not using five gig, but also there's just so much crap in 2.4. I went to a site the other day that, that five floors, the building was all by itself, huge parking lot around it. No, you couldn't hear anything outside of this building. And the 2.4 was completely and utterly just, just bombed. It was dead. And I was like, why in the world? It was all headsets, just headsets. They had hundreds of them. And so, uh, you know, the, it, this place was a, a firm that did a lot of recruiting. And they were on the phones all day. And, they, and I said, well, you can get rid of the headsets or you can use 2.4 for Wi-Fi. Take your pick. And they're like, I, 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 I. And I said, dude, it's physics. I'm sorry. You get a choice. So... <clears throat> So here's a tool, I really love this tool. Uh, Rick Murphy has written this thing, and I guess it's in Flash, and uh, everybody's favorite protocol. And, but this, this tool is uh, it's available for, um, for free on their website, on the wirelesstrainingsolutions.com website. 
and it, it's a uh, channel simulator, and you can see all the, the you know, available channels in five gig and, and, and you know, how, uh, how the 20 and 40 and 80 megahertz widths play and which channels can do what and so on. Very, very good tool for, for seeing um, you know, how much more frequency space do we have in five and why aren't we using it? It doesn't penetrate walls as well. It, it, we can do wider channels if we want to do that, but there's just tons and tons of channels. This is fantastic. Why, why 2.4? Every customer I have, everybody who asks me anything, I'm trying to move them to five gigahertz as fast as I can. So, so um, if you want good performance, move to five gig. Yes, there's DFS issues. We are dealing with DFS issues all the time. Um, I heard uh, the right, at least my opinion of the right answer on how do you, how do you uh, go about designing around DFS if your clients don't support them uh, correctly. I believe it was Mike in the, uh, the CWE roundtable we had up here. He said that the hope is that their clients that are not DFS capable can roam to a nearby AP. And so, in other words, if you'll take your DFS channels and smather them, and yes, it takes some uh, manual plan to do that kind of stuff, but if you can smather, and if we can get the RRM algorithms such that, and I don't know if the, the manufacturers want to play along, but get it to where the DFS is kind of, um, let's call it smathered between Uni 1 and Uni 3, this will help. It, it l lets us move to this early. You, you do need to look at your client devices and what they're capable of. Um, move to 11AC as soon as possible in the clients. I get people all the time saying, hey, can you optimize in my network? Uh, and I look at it and it's, you know, it's loaded in 2.4, of course. And, I, and when we start moving to 5 gig, they say, but I've got these three clients. I say, what kind of clients are they? Well, they're laptops or they're USB. Or they're, I'm like, okay, so it costs you, you know, 75 bucks to replace three clients. Or you can pay me another, I don't know, two weeks worth of you know, work to, to try to design around it. Um, I said, just buy the three clients, really, seriously. And, and for some reason, they just, they just can't seem to come to grips with, you know what, just give them a card, get them off 2-4. I, I'm, this one's a sticking point for me. Uh, whether it's HP printers, I want to, I want to find somebody at HP that, that can make a decision and throttle them and say, please put five gig in your printers. Um, I love your printers. I just wish they had five gig in them. And so it, this goes for lots of devices. It, it, you know, whether it's tablets or laptops or anything else, um, you know, we need to, to stop buying things that are two, four only. How many you know, of you guys that are consultants go to, uh, whether it's a, a school or, or anything else, you, you go into an environment and they just bought a whole bunch of brand new laptops. They were really cheap and it was awesome. Yeah, they didn't test them. They didn't know the specs. They didn't know the, anything about this stuff. But now you, you get to deal with that crap. Now I I think it's been two points wrong. Woohoo! Oh, some overtime? Bummer. Um, so uh, should, I, should I just stop or, or should I just let you look at the rest of those real quick and say there's a bunch of reasons uh, why you want to move to 5 gigahertz. So dang, I was about, that's about 20 seconds away. But let's just. Oh, that was the buffer? Oh, I, oh, okay, bummer. Uh, <laughs> so, su suffice to say that that uh, um, it it's not yet completely dead. Of course not, because it's still usable in a lot of environments. But if user experience is important, and and if performance is important, and happy customers are important. Should you not be moving away from this thing that's absolutely broken and getting more broken by the day? Of course you should. Devin, I'll ask the, the $10 million question in the room, which is, how do we actually educate the consumer the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz? Because, because they go into the Best Buy and they see the printer and it says wireless. Hey, great. Right. They don't know anything about 2.4, 5 gigahertz, right? nothing. They don't know anything about that. I don't think there's a magic bullet here. Um, you know, I've, I've got uh, um, one customer who's here at the conference, and luckily um, their team is very educated. And so, uh, you know, it was easy to come in there and, and say, um, okay, I think this would be a good... Oh. <laughs> no, it's not distracting at all. <laughs> I love you, man. Um, and so, um, luckily in that case, you you come in and you say, here's, here's some of the reasons I think we should move. And they're like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Sometimes, you know, you're there an extra half day trying to explain to somebody first who don't know and secondly who don't care. They just want it to work and, and, and they've just, they, without you knowing, they just bought a bunch of stuff that you can't really work with too well. So there, I don't think there's a magic bullet there. I think, you know, if there's more blogs, it helps. You can point people to them. That's what I do. Andrew's, you know, he writes an incredibly good blog and I point lots of people to it. And, so I think it just takes time. But as, as the industry starts moving to five gig, I think 
what happens in a lot of these uh, healthcare and uh, education environments is, is they talk. If you're working for one, they're talking to three or four others, right? That's one of the reasons you guys get business that way. And as they talk, they go, well, we're moving to five gig, man. And, and great, that means five of your friends are going to move five gig. Eventually we'll get there. That's, that's my Thank you very much, Kevin. Yay.